We've seen some interesting things in Delicious in Dungeon. I mean, we literally ate what seemed to me like seafood out of a suit of armor. That's pretty nasty. But there was something about that gooey texture of that burger that to me... I don't know why. It just felt like too much. It reminded me of how in Spongebob they would take the jelly off of those jellyfish and put it in between hamburger buns and they would act like it was the greatest thing. It's like there's some textures that just don't belong together and that weird slimy goo that was just gems. Like it, it's so, it's like, sure, in our own world, we have candy that look like objects and they taste just fine. It's entirely possible that whole jar of gems that aren't gems could be just very sweet, very pleasant. That's why that the ice cream, the sorbet at the end, I'd mess with that. Not gonna lie. As soon as they chill that stuff, it has a more natural, pleasant looking texture. But when you slap it between two hamburger buns, I don't know what it is. It just gets to my gag reflex. And part of the charm of watching a show like Delicious and Dungeon is seeing the creativity to the cooking, but most importantly, continuing to make this still feel like a dungeon crawling adventure. And they're doing such a good job at this. Now, episode 5, I do a full live reaction over on my Patreon, so if you want to see my full link of thoughts as we watch today's episode, it's over there if you're interested. I am obviously loving the show. From pretty much episode 1, I was saying this could be Studio Trigger's new best anime. I mean, it's the perfect type of source material for them to adapt, and the style that they're going for, the expression, it just feels like a perfect Studio Trigger anime through and through. And while the first couple of episodes maybe didn't have as much triggerism as you may be used to with this studio. I think in recent episodes they've really found their groove in making it both feel like an adaptation of something, but most importantly they put their own spin to it with their visual creativity, with how they do different types of animation techniques and everything like that. The thing about this episode, which I really enjoy, is that it continues to remind me and showcase the fact that despite this being a dungeon crawling anime, you can't necessarily tell that they're in a dungeon. And I don't mean that as an insult, like, oh, the dungeon uh, formula is so bad. No, like, this is why it's so good. There's very few shows that I think have actually properly handled what I think a dungeon should be. I think Don Machi, whether you love the series or hate it, does a really good job at making different floors, different areas, feel like their own worlds. Like, I mean, sometimes you think you're on the surface in that show, and I think this show is doing just as good of a job, if not more. We're only five episodes in, so it's not exactly fair to compare to some of the best, like, visual-looking dungeon crawlers that I've seen, but if this keeps up, I really feel like there's gonna be no competition. I mean, if you look at where we've been, I think it was in the second episode, it looked like they were on a surface with, like, a big forest area. We've gone into like some dwarven cave-like locations like in last week's episode. This week, it looks like we're in a haunted building going down a bunch of staircases. The fact that the location design is continuing to evolve with this show, and in doing so, we get to also evolve the creatures we're fighting. We dealt with ghosts in this episode, and it was fantastic. I love a good horror aesthetic. So having something, I mean, you start off with a group of adventurers who I was like, oh, like, what is the point? Is this supposed to be a mirror to our main party? And seemingly they killed him off. We didn't even attempt to revive them or anything we just said hey the people who collect bodies will deal with them as they're surrounded by a haunted bunch of coins i wasn't sure what happened their souls got sucked from them turns out we have these like these jewels that aren't actually jewels because they're like these bugs that pretty much imitate like a, a necklace or gold coins whatever else it may be and obviously we can see how quickly they could get the jump on it if it wasn't for that new sword we got with the cool you know sentient being going on there i mean it's entirely possible we would have lost at least one of our characters and honestly that is kind of insane to think about because the concept of death in a show like this is very interesting because you know characters can come back the dude's sister is inside a dragon's stomach and while it's worrisome they're not assuming she can't be saved so like we're in a very different idea of what is life and what is death so those characters maybe the people who collect the bodies will be able to revive them they, i don't know like is there only a select amount of magic that you can do to try to save them was she not you know like what happens if one of us dies does marcel not have the ability to revive us there's a lot of questions with that whole dynamic and i'm not sure where we're going with that but that's exciting it's frightening but it's exciting because you don't know what they can and can't do the only thing we know for sure is that whatever they stumble across, since she's gonna find a way to cook it. And as much as some of these things just give me the, I don't know how it had to feel about that, because there, I think objectively, is grosser things that they've ate, but there's something about the texture of that damn goo burger that I don't want the alien spunk that they put between those buns. Like, that's what it looked like. Freeze it all you want and put it into an ice cream texture, if that's more tolerable to me, but jelly substances gotta look a certain way, otherwise, I don't know, the mental image is just 
it's too much for me. I love the fact that literally the girl who had like the most intense reaction to all this literally channeling my energy in this episode is the one to try the centipede necklace. You can tear those little legs off all you want. There is no way I'm eating cooked centipede like that. And the fact that she said it was gooey, I'm like, ugh, that's just a no for me. They do a great job at like the finished product, like the the kind of glamour shots of their meals always look good. And the two things I think I would want to eat were the coins that were fried because it kind of just reminded me of like a fried potato. He obviously says it's like something similar to like a fish, which I'm not into seafood, but honestly, the I, I try that. Like that seems fine. And the ice cream at the end is obviously very appealing just for the colors and everything. But it's not even just like they make food in the typical way. They also make holy water, which is like when you hear holy water, you assume you need someone to be like, okay, forgive me father we're about to sin and you know we're gonna pray to jesus above no it's like senshi just has every idea in the back of his hand and he's swinging that thing around hunting the ghost and it was really cool it really was and like i said i love the idea of how different not only each episode is but each location because sometimes we have multiple locations in one episode right it's not just a one size fits all and going through this it should be boring on paper, you would think, but the idea that there's so many overhead shots where you see, like, there are a hundred stories up for just this one location, just one wrong move, you know, get you get spooked by a ghost and get pushed over the edge, you're done, you're not coming back from that. And they even surprise us with having a bit more with Laos and his sister, because if you really look at the two, the sister seems like the most charming out of the two. Why could she be saved? Why do we have to have our knight friend who can't even admit that he has a talking sword right now, or not talking, but a living sword at this point? Uh, you know, because clearly, like, he needs to expose that secret but he's keeping it and i guess we'll see where it goes but the idea that you know he's very socially awkward as a character and the fact that the sister would always explain that no he didn't mean it that way it was this way i think it does explain some of his behavior when it comes to the idea that he feels like he's more interested in the cooking than it is him saving his sister i don't think that's actually true i think it's i mean it seems that way from my point of view at multiple points and i've seen other people say it too i think it's just more so he is so interested in cooking that he has a hard time properly expressing that he does want to save his sister he is worried about his sister it's just the only thing he can express is his love for the cooking so you know it's kind of like well if we're gonna have the journey into satan's hell pit anyway i'm at least gonna enjoy the journey to get there sort of a thing which i guess is technically still twisted but maybe not as twisted as i, as I first thought when starting into this show i've been saying that delicious and dungeon is one of my personal top picks of this anime season i'm standing by that statement i think it's probably a top three show for me right now like that's probably where i'd rank it i'm loving it i took a look at the dub uh i didn't watch like a full episode but i heard all the main characters voices uh senshi voiced by my boy prosy d doing a very good job so it's just nice it's really nice to have a show that's this consistent simul dub everything just I'm loving this show let me know what you thought because i definitely think there's been grosser things in this show but there's something about that gooey texture i just can't mess with man but let me know what you're feeling down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell and like i mentioned we have that full live reaction over on my patreon and while you're over there I'll also give you video shout out so today we have jacob kinging adam perez peachy queen macy nicholas wilhelm and yelena so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one